Game Chat with Buona, episode 34. Come right now. Welcome to Game Chat with Buona, your source for gaming news and reviews. Now, here's Buona McCall. What? What you want? What are you looking at? This is Game Chat 1, episode 34, coming at you live. It is Monday, Monday, October 17, 2011. We are here at live.boy.tv and twitch.tv slash Buona, where we talk about the latest gaming news for the past seven days. Seven days of gaming news here at Game Chat with Buona here. And uh, what we do here at Game Chat with Buona, in case you didn't understand or just was confused about that whole intro part, because my face was so mesmerizing, is that we talk about the latest gaming news and we scour the webs, we find all of our sources and we try to find the most interesting stuff, but we fail. We don't always find the most interesting things. So what we do is we allow users to submit their own stories to kind of augment. I didn't ask for this. To augment our stories and try to enhance the stories they go to buona.tv slash forums which is our community forum you guys should be at if you're not i'm gonna smack you virtually with pixels somehow go to buona.tv slash forums you can sign up there you can submit stories and i will go through those towards the end of the show we kind of have a two-part show where i talk about stuff and then i go read your stuff and then we talk about it whole time the chat's moving up you guys are discussing it and it's a big shebang called game chat with me it's called game chat one which is me same thing so we're gonna go ahead and get started i'm not gonna so our first story that we're going to talk about is pro gaming or esports and uh one of the big things that happened this weekend was mlg in orlando which is kind of close to me so a lot of people in florida were kind of familiar with what's going on the reason i want to talk about this story is not necessarily esports in orlando but kind of a weird situation where a professional athlete is actually, you know, just dipping into the world of esports or professional gaming. So if you're not familiar with the National Basketball Association, the NBA, they're currently going through a pretty, uh, pretty bad players union conflict and walk and not walkouts, but just just. There's a there's a high chance that it won't be a preseason this year and players might not get paid because of contractual blah, blah, blah. So one of these players, what he did is that he's actually pretty good in StarCraft. So he decided this guy, Gordon Hayward, 21 year old member of the Utah Jazz, he actually entered the IPL three origins tournament in Atlantic City. And uh, he was one of 256 people to compete. And he actually did not too bad he did kind of he did, he did all right he won his first match 2-1 and he lost his second match but unfortunately he had to forfeit his third match due to an interview conflict so he ended up losing you know he didn't qualify for the tournament but you know that's pretty much the day in the life of a lot of professional gamers they don't always qualify for the big tournaments they don't always win the big tournaments but you know professional gamers make their money off of sponsorships and team members and you know, being part of the big teams and things like that. But that was very, very interesting that this guy is going from professional basketball and say, all right, since you guys are going to pay me to play basketball, we require more dunks. You must place additional picks. I don't have any more basketball StarCraft jokes. I'm sorry. I'm thinking really hard. I don't have any. But this is a very, very interesting story, guys. Uh, something you don't hear about or see or read about every day. So check it out. This is over on escapismagazine.com. They got the details about a professional athlete coming from the NBA over to StarCraft II to become a professional gamer. Now we're going to talk about... Bum, 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 bum. Boom, 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 boom. But before I do, we're going to watch a short video. Dude, that time sucked. Nobody's going to show up. Well, what's wrong with it? 
Look at it, dude. You're not offering any fabulous prizes. You have to offer fabulous prizes if you want people to show up for your stupid crap. Here. Free hats? Yeah, if you offer free hats, maybe people will show up. But we don't have hats! We can just make them out of paper. Ah! It's not hard, just stupid little paper hats. People just need free stuff. Don't you guys know? Guys, no, 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 guys, no. Yeah, so that's the synopsis of what I'm going to talk about next is the surprise anniversary update and sale. So what Team Fortress 2 is, is, is celebrating is their first anniversary of the Manco store where they first came out with the, the man economy update. And um, they're going to offer a whole bunch of new stuff. And <laughs> like the like the like the YouTube video said, they offered us a free paper hat to celebrate. Um, and in case you didn't get that end part, the update's not entirely stable. Matter of fact, that's exactly what happens. The game locks up and then Half-Life 2, HL2.exe crashes. Um, that's exactly what's happened. I think all of us have logged at least five crashes since this update. But there's a lot of cool items. If you're into TF2, you're probably going to like this. Uh, there's a lot of cool items, a lot of uh, a couple of new features were added. A, an extra miscellaneous slot was added. Uh, some some features were added to the store regarding trading, uh, new taunts, and try before you buy, which I think a lot of people are going to like, that you can actually try a weapon for a week before you actually buy it. No charge at all. So you can actually try it. And if you do like it, you can keep the weapon. So that's a good way for people to make a decision whether they want to buy a weapon or not. Uh, they got decal items, all kinds of cool stuff in this update. If you don't crash... Very, very big update. Very, very cool. Lots of, I mean, I'm very excited about it. I just want Valve to fix the crashes because they're kind of bad. Um, that's probably one of the reasons I haven't played in a while because I got tired of crashing. Other than that, I mean, I've been trading outside of the game, but um, I just I just want them to fix the crashes and everything will be great. And I'll, we'll be celebrating with our paper hats with the Man Economy update. Go check this out, guys. This is over on Team Fortress 2 or TeamFortress.com. It's the latest story, I think. Surprise man anniversary update and sale. And while we're on the topic of Valve, let me hide my bookmark bar while I'm doing this. While we're on the topic of Valve, I found this story on GamePolitics.com, which uh, kind of was something I kind of knew, but when the number hit me in the face, it hurt like a slap. It was like, Psh, ooh. Valve's making a lot of money off of these uh, pixels. Um, Valve Software claims that more than $2 million has been generated from Team Fortress 2 microtransactions. $2 million. Now, this game is not new. This game has been out a while. Most other games this age, in this generation, I'm going to say it, are not going as strong as TF2. And I got to say, you know, in retrospect, a lot of people hated the idea that Valve went with this and you know, oh, are well, you going to sell hats? You know, I was one of the ones that didn't want to buy keys. That was my big deal. Now, I didn't like trading servers. I didn't like regular servers turning to trading servers, but that's since been alleviated through through uh, plugins. But it was hard to call back then. It was like, I don't think this is a good idea. You're going to ruin the game. But turns out by Valve going free to play, well, first with the Man Economy update, and then they went free to play, $2 million later, it looks like a brilliant idea. Because this is essentially a game they're giving away and they get $2 million just on the macro, microtransactions alone. Um, so it, it's, it's very, very interesting. And, you know, it's just, it just goes to show that we don't know everything, including myself, because I was very anti-key for a while. Now I give my bottle of water for a key. I don't buy many keys anymore, but um, it, it's, just, it's just the idea of microtransactions on the game you've already bought was really rubbing me the wrong way. Since they went free to play, you can kind of understand because that's the typical free to play model is that you pay microtransactions on top of all the other stuff so the companies can survive. Released in 2007, guys. 2007. It is 2011. What other games released in 2007 are still being talked about today? Not a whole lot. There's games older than that that have been talked about, but 
2007. That's pretty old for a uh, for a game. So check it out, guys. It's over on GamePolitics.com. Uh, they got the details over there. You can see what's going on with these monies that are going in your Valve's pockets because of these pixel hats, paper hats. And guys, 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 it crashes. Okay, speaking of that microtransaction thing, let's talk about this game called World of Warcraft. And uh, you guys may remember, it was a while ago, you may or may not remember um, a particular story that I think I talked about on Buona.org Radio or either game chat. I don't remember which one. But Blizzard came out with this shining mount that cost $25. And at the time... <clears throat> It was unheard of to pay $25. Now, now, just think about it. At the time, it was unheard of to pay $25 for pixels. We were going nuts back then. We were like, oh, oh you guys are so stupid. Why would you pay $25 for a horse in a game that doesn't do anything? You're so dumb! Oh, 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 oh. And looking back on that, we're kind of doing that like everywhere now. I look at the money I spent on League of Legends and I go, hmm. I actually spent that on pixels. couple years ago I would have been laughing at the idea oh, no are you mad there's no way and now I'm like new Timo skin by now so it's, it's kind of a history lesson how quickly things can change and how susceptible we are including myself and I try to call these things out when I see the trend and I fall victim to I, I'm a hey, I'm not perfect guys, but the reason I, I brought all that up is because um, now World of Warcraft is basically going to bring in the idea of real money trading into World of Warcraft. They're going to seep it in. And you remember a few shows ago, we talked about Diablo three doing the same thing. And back then we even said, this is a bad idea. I don't like the idea of buying the win. I don't like the idea of buying the win. And you know, we were kind of brainwashed to accept it if it doesn't affect game balance. So, okay, you can sell us a $25 horse. I don't care, just as long as it, the horse doesn't jump over the moon. I'm fine with it. So what Blizzard is doing is they're going to have a little pet that you'll be able to buy with money and trade for gold. Um, so it's kind of a legitimate way of real money trading in World of Warcraft. And they're going to put some limitations on it because they realize that people can definitely abuse this. You can only trade the thing once. Uh, once you equip it, it's bound to your character. So it's not like uh, you can, I think they say you can own more than one. Uh, let me, let me get the exact text. I don't want to mess this up. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, there are limitations on the pet. Being a long-term way to loan them on the blender will sell the guardian for only ten dollars, and a little bugger can only be traded once. You can carry as many guardian cubs as you can fit in your bags. They do not stack and take up one slot each, so that they kind of making it hard to do it. But players can only add it to their companion list once. So once you add it to your companion list, it is bound, soul bound, to you. Um, so it, it, it's kind of a it's not drastic what they're doing, but it is paving the way for something possibly much bigger. And it could be a test bed for Blizzard's next MMO, um, which we're all kind of anticipating to be a free to play game. Uh, I think when I talked about it on the show, everybody kind of agreed with me that the old Republic is probably going to be one of the last major subscription based MMOs. And uh, we're going to talk about another MMO tonight that's looking to not be. Uh, we're going to get into that. Um, but this is interesting, guys. Wild gets real money trading. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about it. I I don't like the idea of real money trading in MMOs. 
uh, having played a lot of MMOs myself, it seems to have always ruined the game. Um, but I don't know everything, as we've proven. So if Valve, I'm sorry, if if Blizzard can get it right, um, kind of like as Valve has kind of got it right. I mean, TF2 is not really affected by the the uh, transactions at all. It's like all cosmetic stuff uh, most of the time. You can join vanilla servers. Um, so if you pay to win in TF2, you know, I, I, I don't see, I don't know. I don't see how it can be done, but uh, you can buy weapons in TF2. But I don't think I don't think it's affecting the game that much. Um, but these these items, you know, we'll see where it goes if it affects the game. So check it out, guys. I'm not gonna not gonna dwell on that too long. This is over on EscapistMagazine.com. They got the details over there. Game chat with Juana is recorded live before a worldwide audience every Monday night. You can participate by suggesting news stories. Just register an account in our forums at buona.tv slash forums. Sorry guys, dance break. I need it. Okay, we're going to move on to our next story, which is going to talk about Batman Arkham City. And uh, almost every show, it seems like we're talking about the controversial online pass. And if you don't know what the online pass is, this is the new system implemented by game developers to prevent or to thwart what we call the underground used game market. Um, you know about used games, right? You go to GameStop, you see a game used that has so many nasty fingerprints and toilet marks all over the disc. And you go, I will pay... Uh, Markdown price for said fingerprinted toilet marked disc. And you buy that toilet marked fingerprint disc and you put it in your Xbox 360 or PS3. And you don't mind the contaminants that come along with it. But you press that power button and you enjoy that game for a discounted price. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, but, you know, a lot, of, a lot of these game companies are fighting it. And they're saying that they're, they're losing money on it. And it's a huge debate. Uh, no, I don't think any side is winning the debate. Because both sides make good points, and I don't think really nobody's really convinced me that the one the other side is wrong or the other side is right. Um, but I buy all my games new, so I'm a little bit biased. I don't really care about online passes personally because I'm not going to encounter this. I don't buy games used, uh, especially multiplayer games that I'm going to play. I just don't buy them used um, because of toilet stains and finger. No, but uh, Catwoman is going to be limited. Through the online pass so this is a character that you can play it's going to be a skinned character um that you can play in the game it's not going to affect the outcome of the game it's just a skin uh batman arkham asylum has been you know we uh there's a story that came out there's going to be a ton of skins available for the game they're going to have different skin batmans they're going to have robin they're going to have nightwing all these characters that you can play as um that doesn't necessarily you know degrade the, the experience if you don't play with them. They're like skins, if you will. Uh, Super Teemo, for example. I love that very much. Um, Batman Arkham City. You got to pay $10 if you buy the game used, guys. So if you're going to rent this game, don't count on Catwoman being playable unless you go to the Xbox Live Marketplace or PSN and shove out $10 out of your dirty little pockets to purchase an online so look for this to, you know, this is pretty much going to be the norm now. You ever use Windows and it makes the sound of something crash death and you don't know what it is and you're kind of scared to look around to see what crashed? That just happened to me. Something just crashed and I don't know what it is. <laughs> But we're going to keep moving anyway because we're bold and we're happy. So Catwoman has unlocked the Batman Arkham City through online pass. Check it out, guys. This is over on joystick.com. They got the details over there. Now, while we're talking about DLC, we're going to shift gears a little bit. And it's going to be a massive gear because we're going to be talking about this probably half the show. This game, Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 13-2. If you haven't seen it, uh, there was some footage that was released that came out at Comic-Con this weekend. 
And I'm one of the few people, I'm in the minority apparently, I like Final Fantasy 13. I thought it was a great game. I played many, many hours of it, and I loved a majority of it. I really did. I mean, at one part, it got a little grindy, but if you play Final Fantasy and grind is not in your mentality or vocabulary, there's something wrong with you. Every Final Fantasy out there is grindy. It is. Yes, it is. So I didn't mind that too much. I was like, well, it's Final Fantasy. I got to grind for 15,000 hours. You know, it's good. Um, 13-2. 13-2 looks really good. Um, I saw the cinematic. And if you follow the 13 story, it's cheesy. It's Final Fantasy. But it looks good. Um, and I was like, okay, I can buy this storyline. I can buy the story arc. This, this sounds really, really fun. Um, so it looks like it's going to be something that I would want to play. And I found this story on PlayStationLifestyle.net that says that Final Fantasy 13-2 is going to have monthly DLC. And I first saw the, the, uh, the, I, I first saw the, the, the headline. I got a little scared. I was like, huh? Monthly DLC. What are they trying to do? And then I read what it is actually going to be. Basically it's going to be little doohickeys. Little skins and look what else? Let me let me read what they have here. Uh, will feature multiple items that the gamers can expect one or two updates per month. Already revealed the boss monster Omega, which lets players take on Omega and recruit him into their party, as well as costumes uh, for the game's two main characters. So costumes, yeah, I don't care about that stuff. The boss one, you know, that might be something that might be like a ten fifteen dollar one because. That looks kind of major that he you can add him to your party and it's, it looks, sounds like it's going to be content behind it because you have to actually fight him so we'll see about that one uh but monthly dlc coming to final fantasy 13-2 so those of you who thought 13 kind of lacked after you finished it you'd be happy to know that square enix is possibly looking at a model that can keep you interested um a lot of game companies are, are utilizing dlc now to kind of keep you guys going on the games until they can release an update for it so, um, I, I don't know. So it, it, it's, it, it's, it's one of those topics that's controversial DLC. Uh, I always bash it. I always talk about it here. Um, but we're, we're entering a gaming, uh, I'm, I'm starting to come to the realization that a lot of, uh, some of these companies don't have a choice, um, because they're so big they're so bloated that the only way they could keep moving is that is if they nickel and dime us they don't if you look at it from a business perspective they don't have a choice that's why it really rules to be an indie gamer right now because you don't have all that dead weight to drag along you don't have to nickel and dime your customers in order to stay afloat in this economy so um you know it's kind of be, it's the downside of being a huge company you got to nickel and dime your customers to stay afloat because you're too big um so Hey, them's the break. So we can either choose to support these companies with the DLC and buy their games, or we can choose to support any developers, or we can choose to support nobody and just don't play any games. Choice is yours. Check it out, guys. This is over on PlayStation Lifestyle.net. DLC monthly Final Fantasy 13 2 will have uh, that DLC stuff. Please support Game Chat with Buana by turning off your ad blocking software. So, now I had I had to put a little break early there because this next story is kind of big. Um, if you guys follow my YouTube channel, you may have seen my Final Fantasy XIV review where I gave it a 6 out of 10. Probably the lowest scores I've ever given, given a game since I've been reviewing games. Um, but as a lot of you said in the comments on that video, um, I really covered a lot of the positives more than a lot of other reviewers did a lot of reviewers just all just bash 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 talked about the negatives more than they did the positives i like to focus on the positive and um in final fantasy 14 there was a lot of things that i saw that were good that were innovative that i had not seen before in this crowded mushy mmo space um so i was like okay there's a glimmer of hope there 
And a lot of you came back to the video and said, hey, boy, have they patched? Have they patched? Have they patched? You know, I've been looking forward to it since she told us about it. Well, guys, I think the time is coming very closely to where you might want to try this again, especially if you bought it. I'm not going to tell you guys to go out and buy it, but if you bought it already and you just canceled your subscription, reinstall it. Reinstall it today because this 1.19 patch, and there's like a two-part to this uh, that I'm going to talk about this, but this 1.19 patch is the result of a long road. There's been several incremental patches that have been adding a lot of improvements to the game. It's a long road of what I essentially call a rewrite. It, it's a, it, the game, it, once you see these updates, you're going to say, or if you play the game without looking at these updates, you might not even recognize it. Um, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of changes. I'm going to quickly show you this web page here. This, this page with the patch notes. And it literally took almost 45 minutes for me to adjust the whole thing. It's so big, they had to break it out amongst like six or seven posts. Um, and this is a huge patch, and this is 1.19, and we're going to talk about patch 2.0 after this. It is ginormous. I'm going to start with the beginnings. Uh, of the uh, patch first they're going to add a tutorial which we don't care about most of us don't care but it's an interface tutorial to teach people how to use the final fantasy interface because like i said in my review final fantasy is an mmo that is console friendly it is a console friendly mmo so the control scheme is very very console based um I played a lot of Final Fantasy XI, which was Final Fan which was a console-based MMO as well. And I got used to the camera system. I got used to everything because they put in decent keyboard shortcuts to where I didn't even have to use the mouse at all. So I was happy, or I wasn't happy, but I, I was I was hoping that Final Fantasy XIV would have the similar type of thing. One of my gripes was the camera system was bad. So they're promising an overhaul of the camera system. That's one of the things. Um, several new side quests have been added to the game. Now, a big complaint of Final Fantasy XIV, which is valid, was that there wasn't enough content. There was very little quest to do outside of the main quest. Once you got to a certain level, there was literally nothing. There was nothing to do. There was literally nothing at all. You just, you just sit in the barren land, and then it would be like, oh, there's nothing to do. So <clears throat> they've added a whole bunch of side quests. Disorganized crime. This, you know, all these different areas uh, in the cities where you can pick up these quests. So that's going to address some of those concerns, and they're going to be adding more and more and more. Um, now, with this patch, they're going to be adding a whole new system called companies, which are kind of be going to be these allegiances that you form with these different organizations. There's three companies. There's Maelstrom, Order of the Twin Adder, and Immortal Flames. So basically you would have to complete a quest to become part of a company. And once you become part of the company and complete the quest, you get a rank. And within this patch, it's limited to private third class. And once you get the rank, you get a custom salute. I imagine this is going to be the basis for a PVP system. It sounds like it'd be perfect for it. So, also, company leaves have been introduced. You remember the leave quest? I don't know if you guys remember the leave quest. Company leaves will be introduced where you can earn currency within your, within your company. There's so much in here. I'm trying to remember it all. And I'm just barely on the first post. Um, so, the company system is there. You're going to be earning uh, all types of currency. You're going to earn company currency. I think it's company, uh, I can't remember, the bills or something. As you're going to earn with this, which you can purchase things with. And we're going to talk about that in a bit. Uh, they've added supply provisioning missions where you can do supply runs. I, I remember that from Final Fantasy XI. Uh, they're going to be adding two new battles with the Ifrit boss. And I was like, Ifrit? K. Okay. Very, very cool. Uh, it's going to be called the Bowl of Embers. It's going to be a four-man raid or a eight-man raid and it's going to be 25 and level 45 accordingly so 
Um, Ifrit's been at it. Caravan security missions, where you have to escort these chocobos, or chocobos, I'm sorry, old habit. These chocobos, you have to escort these guys, and if you let one of them run away, you'll lose money. So it's, it's an escort quest. I was like, okay. You can also buy or rent personal chocobos now. Chocobos. You can, you can rent them. You can buy them, just like Final Fantasy XI. You buy them with that company currency. That was all missing. I was like, where are the chocobos? They're not there. They're there now. Air, airships have been added. <laughs> you can go different cities with airships. I think I'm still on the first post. Um, I did rental. You can ride the chocobos. Yeah, the chocobos. You got it. Okay. Um, Jeez. Uh, they added some additions to the leave quest system, a history, a uh, different system for the whole thing that I'm not going to go over. Um, uh, several, okay, here's, here's, here's an exciting part. They add a whole bunch of new enemies and they reduce the respawn time. So the, the whole area is not going to be empty. Uh, several new enemies. And what we had in uh, Final Fantasy XI was called Notorious Monsters. These were... I don't know what they're called in other games now. I can't remember, but they would just pop in these certain areas, and if you kill them, you get some really, really good items. And they only pop at certain times, and you have people waiting on them to pop. So they added six new notorious monsters just in this patch. And oh man, okay, uh, here it is. Enemy respawn, respawn timers have been reduced. Uh, size of enemies have been adjusted. Uh, I think I might be on the end of the first post. I'm not. No. Oh, the new claiming system has been fixed. Uh, you can have something that's uh, claimed by you or your party, claimed by another party, and link but unclaimed, very similar to the Final Fantasy XI system, which I applaud. Thank you. This is exactly what I asked for. Um, uh, the linking system has been implemented, so monsters can call for help. They can link some certain mobs. Can link. That's also was in Final Fantasy XI. XP chains are back. Very, very awesome. XP chains. You kill a certain number of mobs and you in a row within a certain time frame of each other, and you get XP bonuses. So you can just chain mobs over and over again. So if you get got a really efficient party, you'll get a lot of XP. Something else from Final Fantasy XI. Um, and they tell you how much experience points you're getting as a bonus of that. Oh, my goodness. All right. Um, I, okay, that was the first post. I'm sorry, that was the second post. I, I was scrolling too fast. Now we're in the third post. Third post. So there's item updates. I, I, guys, go read this. Um... I can't go through all it. It's it's so it's overwhelming how much stuff has changed. Overwhelming. And this is just patch 1.19. Um eh, This is I, I I I was telling people in Mumble and chat that I'm going to reinstall this game now. It's very very intriguing to install it. Now, on top of this, Today, it was announced that version 2.0 is being planned and a release date for the PlayStation 3 version was announced. So on top of all that stuff I just named, there's plans to improve the game even more. Um, so this is an announcement from the development team. And one of the big things here is that they're going to stop. You remember the game with free to play because they said it was so bad that they can't charge us for it. And, you know, it's been like a year of that. Um, so that's going to conclude at the end of November and December. And they're going to resume the subscription billing service. So if you bought the game, now's the time to see if it's worth resubbing up. Go in and reinstall it now while the free period is up. 1.19, all that stuff. And then some that I just named is going to be in that. So you'll have between now and the end of November to evaluate if the game is worth your subscription money. Um, and some other things. Um, yeah, the Final Fantasy, the PlayStation 3 version will be between October and December of 2012. Um, so that's going to be very, very interesting. And a whole bunch of new things. And they gave us some roadmap documents. I'm only going to show you one because uh, it's just so much. I was reading this before the show and I was just shaking my head going, oh my gosh. So there's some artwork here. This second one really caught my attention. A screenshot. I like to see in-game screenshots. And you know what this reminds me of? Final Fantasy XI. I was like, yes. That, why can't I, why didn't, 
I think why didn't I get that at long? That's yes. That interface, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um. So. Yeah, look forward to that. And here's some more concept shots, some more monsters, mobs, uh, lots of things that are going to be coming in the 2.0 version. So, like I said, guys, if you bought the game, if you bought it, reinstall it, patch up, see what they've added, see if it's worth it. You know, if you got a friend who bought it, you know, say, hey, reinstall Final Fantasy 14 so I can see all the new stuff. But I don't play that's that's like thirty thousand gigs, man. Come on, man, do it! Or I'll freaking kill your face with my feet. And then he'll do it. Um. Yeah. So this is a giant PDF. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. Check it out, guys. That is everywhere. Check out the links. Um. Wow. 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 Very very cool, dude. I, I'm I'm really happy for him. Tune in to all things Buona throughout the week on live.buona.tv and on justin.tv slash Buona. Now, if that wasn't enough, let's talk about Battlefield 3 now. Battlefield 3 got a lot of bad, I guess, bad word of mouth from the beta. And you know, you know, uh, Dice came out and said that oh, it's old code. It's going to be fixed by the uh, by release. And a lot of us, including myself, were kind of skeptical. We were like, I don't know, guys. You don't have enough time. So this past weekend, they had the G Force land. It was in, it was in Oakland and it was on the aircraft carrier, which I thought was awesome. Um, and a guy on Reddit posted his impressions of the updated code because what they saw is going to be very very close if not the final build of battlefield 3 so he goes into all these details as to what he saw in this build compared to the beta uh, so the first thing he said was uh the build they played at the land was light years ahead of the beta so it was a lot better apparently um he said that they put a lot of time into polishing it. He does have some gripes in here as well, so it's not all positive. Um, chat interface fixed. So you remember the chat interface on the PC version? Some of you on the consoles probably don't remember. It looked like they just, just slapped it on the screen and didn't care. So apparently they fixed that. The chat text now blends and matches with the rest of the GUI. Same location, but the black background is no longer there. It's overlaid in the screen like in the previous Battlefield games. The squad screen was fixed. So now uh, there were some leaked pictures of that if you didn't see it. So now you can join and, you know, manage squads right in game. That's going to be cool. Um, 3D spotting was refined. So you can no longer, I like what he said here, no more firing at Doritos in the foliage. So you can't just like blind spot people through rocks and stuff like that. The minimap, one of my biggest complaints was the minimap was garbage. So apparently, according to this guy, the minimap is fixed. It's been vastly improved, and it's almost on par with the map in Battlefield 2. That's saying a lot, because Battlefield 2's map was, was perfect. Uh, there was, like, literally nothing wrong with it. Uh, so it says you can see the flags, you can see your teammates, empty vehicles, etc., all on the map. Uh, you can't shoot through rocks anymore. Uh, the options menu is now accessible while dead or alive. Um... Let's see if I can find some other things. You got camo options now. Hit detection seems vastly improved. A lot of you have problems with the hit detection. He says it seems vastly improved. He said, granted, we were in a land environment, but the servers were about seven hours away. So there was a little late, a very little latency, but still, uh, he said hit detection seemed really good. Uh, except for some weird issues on the conquest maps, the 64 player complex, complex, conquest maps. Um, there's now a notification where you press Q if you need ammo or medic. Uh, that's kind of similar to the Bad Company 2 method where you point in the medic and you Q, 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 like heal me. Um, the new in-game icons show over teammates, blah, 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 blah. They bumped up the points you receive for completing objectives. So they're going to reward people for actually doing objectives now, more so than just plain killing. Um, the damage model for the weapons feels much more polished. 
Uh, suppressing, let's see, firing an unsuppressed weapon marks you on the enemy minimap for a few seconds. This has been confirmed. Unconfirmed, confirmed, and confirmed. So if you fire an unsuppressed weapon, on the, you're going to show up on the minimap very, very briefly. But you're not going to be spotted as if somebody spots you. Um, so you're not going to see a Dorito over your head. I like this. The Sunfire Tactical Light of the Gods, otherwise known as the Flashlight. <laughs> the Flashlight, man, that thing blinded you. It's been toned down just a bit. They say the circle of light is maybe, he said, maybe 20 to 30% smaller. Uh, the ump has been toned down a little bit. He said it still packs a punch at close range, but definitely is not as strong as it was at long range. Uh, and then he goes into some other weapons. Uh, uh, here we go. Mortars. This was the highlight of this article for me because we hadn't, I hadn't seen mortars in the beta. He said these things are a complete blast. No pun intended. You place them on the ground just like the TUGS or the mobile spawn point. So you just place the mortar down. Once placed, your mini map expands and a reticle appears on the map that you can drag around for a set range. Click, fire, wash, rinse, repeat. So basically, you drop the mortar, you get the mini map, you, you set the range, and then you drop mortars. Uh, he said, at first it seemed like it would be OP, but then they have a lag time and a margin of error that prevented other domination. I can see some really interesting tactics being developed for this in competition. It's perfect for bombarding a squad that is camping in a certain area. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, much more stuff down here with weapons. He said the maps were pretty good. Um, some bug complaints. He said that the reticle would appear, he said, with the grenade launcher. Then it would. I think he said it would disappear. Oh, no, he said, I would get the grenade launcher red from Battlefield 2 overlaid on top of the normal reticle for the rifle. So it was like some reticle bugs coming up. Um, and uh, he said, the only design complaint I had with this new build is that for some reason they've changed the medic pack icon on the mini map and in game to this funky looking band-aid. Yeah, I think that's what it was in, um, in Bad Company. Instead of the standard red cross in Battlefield 2, I thought it was a band-aid uh, on your mini map. Uh, I, I don't know. I, maybe I'm remembering wrong. He says it isn't intuitive in the least bit. So very, very lengthy article talks about a, a lot. I mean, guys, I love Reddit. If you, if you're not on Reddit, you need to sign up. I've been, I've been, um, lurking for years and I finally signed up like nine months ago. Well, actually I signed up a long time ago, but I forgot the count name. Um, but I signed up again nine months ago. My ID on there is Buona TV. So add me. Um, as a friend, you can see what I'm, I'm commenting on and liking, but, uh, it is a very good article on battlefield three. So if you want, I get a, get a perspective on where the beta is going to go. Cause a lot of us, we didn't believe, I mean, I was guilty. We didn't believe the beta was, was, was in good shape. And we were kind of worried that the final version was going to die. We were kind of worried that the final version was going to be less than good. Um, I even said, I was like, man, there's not a lot of time left. I hope they fix all this stuff. And apparently, according to this guy, they have. Uh, a lot of the issues have been addressed. And it's in gratuitous detail, so I kind of believe them. It's hard to make up all this stuff. So check it out, guys. This is over on Reddit. Uh, the links are in the description. So, now. Briefly, from the department of the obviously obvious department. Battlefield 3 is going to have an online pass too, guys. So if you didn't figure that out, because EA kind of invented this, if you didn't figure that out by now, I'm sorry. Um, but if you plan on buying Battlefield 3 used, there's a high probability you have to pay another $10 to play online. So um, just putting that out there, online passes are very, very... Very, very common now. And I, I I mean, I just count on every EA game that's coming out, EA Dice, EA whatever, to have an online pass if there's multiplayer involved. So um, there you go. Now, whew. You guys are killing me. Now we're going to move on to our next story. And we're going to talk about Tribes. This is a game that I, I really, 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 really was fond of. Tribes 2, to be specific. 
uh, it really propelled me into multiplayer shooters. Um, I was addicted to games, multiplayer games, but not a whole lot of multiplayer shooters. And, you know, I played a lot of Quake online. I did play a lot of Quake. I, l I played a lot of uh, ID games. Um, and, you know, I played and I enjoyed it. I played with friends, college buddies, and stuff like that. And, you know, we would goof off. But Tribes had a hold on me. Tribes 2, I, that's all I wanted to play all the time, every day. Even when I went to work, I was talking about Tribes. So Tribes Ascend Beta is going to be starting November 4th. You can pre-order the game and actually get uh, a VIP pack and become a part of that. So you can see the reboot of Tribes coming very, very shortly, guys. Check this out. This is over on Joystick.com. Um, then we're going to move on to our next story. Talk about Uncharted 2. Three. Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception has gone gold. This is one of the games that has come out that really prompted me to dust off my PS3 because, guys, I just haven't been playing my consoles. Any of them. The Wii, the 360, the PS3, just haven't been playing any of them. So this is the game that's going to force me. I'm like, okay, all right, I'll do it. Gosh, I'll dust off the PS3. I will take said PS3 and marry it with the Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception game, and we will have a good time. Um, but the good news is that if you're into Starhawk, if you're into Starhawk, uh, it's going to include the Starhawk beta. Starhawk is going to be the next version of Warhawk, a very, very popular P PlayStation, I was going to say PS title, but PlayStation title. Um, and Starhawk is going to be a space version or a star version of the Warhawk game. It looks really, really cool what they're doing with Starhawk. So check it out. It's going to be early 2012 for the Starhawk multiplayer beta. If you want in and you're going to buy Uncharted, you're in good hands because you're going to be part of that beta. This is over on the, the PlayStation blog. They got the details. And you'll have it out. Now, this Deus Ex game is pretty good, guys. You probably should buy it. Uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution very very cool game and uh, unfortunately i did not have the augmented edition so i didn't get the free soundtrack and i couldn't you can buy it anywhere um and i was kind of upset because the game's music is very very mysterious you know it's good background music when you're doing stuff um i was happy to see that it's going to be available on amazon for twelve dollars and 99 cents on november 15th or twelve dollars and 95 cents us dollars um so this is going to be very, very cool for those of you who are in the soundtracks like me. I love gaming soundtracks. Deus Ex Human Revolution. I was sad I couldn't get it, but now I'm going to be able to have it on November 15th. So check it out, guys. This is over on joystick.com. And our final story. Woo! I never asked for this. Prepare to want. Mario is remarkable. We talked about this a long time ago where the there was this guy who does these reboots. He was making a Super Mario Brothers slash Portal. Uh, reboot kind of cross uh, remix if you will and uh, what's happening is that he's getting very very deep into the development process to where uh, rock paper shotgun received a copy of the of what's actually happening and he says it's definitely going to be a game that you want uh, he even says in here the guy's probably gonna get the suit from here to whenever but because uh, he's you know Nintendo copyright infringement Valve copyright, it's all kinds of infringement probably going on here. Um, but, you know, it, it, it looks like a really promising game. And it's like chocolate and peanut butter for me. I love Portal. I love Mario. If this could come out legitimately, the guy that gets sued into the ground, I'd be all over it. So, you guys, check it out. This is over on Rock, Paper, Shotgun. An update has been, this guy, he's still working on it. I guess that's the update. He's still working on it. It's not out yet, but when it does, when it does come out, be prepared for awesome. And that concludes all my stories. We're going to move on to what you guys got because my voice is dead. Game Chat with Juana is recorded live before a worldwide audience every Monday night. You can participate by suggesting news stories. Just register an account in our forums at buona.tv slash forums. Okay.
guys, I got a new rule for submitting links. I'm only going to take two stories from everybody. I'm glad I've implemented this today because there's no way I could have did the normal 40 minute segment of you guys, uh, <laughs> of you guys' links. So we're going to take the top two stories that you guys have. And I, I think that should be plenty. So we're going to start with Michael McAllister. He says, video game use brain to control action. Video game uses brain to control action. And while we're doing this, you guys get your titles ready because you know we're going to title time, right? Title time's right around the corner. And we're about, uh, yeah, we're about ooh, 50 minutes in already. Um, video game uses brain control action. So you guys ever seen the movie Brainstorm? That's what this reminds me of, Brainstorm. Uh, video games often require children to use their hands to control their action, but a new one released by collaboration that includes an Australian researcher invites kids to use their brains literally. Focus Point uses brainwave reading headset. The Riddler will be proud and helps children ages 7 to 13 improve pulse, impulse control, memory, attention, and relaxation. One of the developers became interested in alternative treatments for children with attention, attention, attention deficit disorder. Hyperactivity disorder after listening to their parents' concerns about over medication. Blah, 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 blah. New game was blah, 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 blah. So basically, they're going to be doing this brain thing. Uh, players wear a headset called the Mind Wave that connects wirelessly to a PC and uses electroencephalographic technology. Woohoo! Got that word. To read electrical activity and brains pre. Frontal cortex is too much smartness in this. Game chat with Buona is not a science. I'm just joking. This is a lot of big words. The mind wave uses a single sensor on the forehead for data input for two sensor to make game go good with brain device. Make think think make ball go on screen. <laughs> Oh, man. This is very interesting, though. I wouldn't do it. Um, I wouldn't let my children do it if I had children. But uh, <laughs> this is very interesting, to say the least. Um, so check it out. That's over on PC World. Uh, that count. Uh, Halo Combat Evolve Anniversary Edition. Uh, nah. Halo Combat Evolve Anniversary Achievements Revealed. And there you go. Bunch of achievements for the Halo reboot. Um, I, I, I I just never been a big fan of achievements coming out. I never read them, even when I played a lot of the consoles. I'm like, okay, they're the achievements. Uh, but I guess if you guys are very interested in getting those achievement points or figuring out what's actually happening, uh, you can sometimes you can get spoilers from achievements, and that's, I think that's part of the reason why I don't read them that much because sometimes it spoils things. It's like, shoot Big Boss Ross in the head. I'm like, who the heck is Big Boss Ross? And then you get a mission, find Big Boss Ross. I'm like, oh, well, pfft, thank you. You just ruined the game for me, achievements. I don't want to play the game anymore because Big Boss Ross was ruined on Joystick because of your stupid achievement. People couldn't wait. I give this game a 4 out of 50 because Big Boss Ross was, you know, that kind of stuff. Thanks for that. All right, let's go to Techniffin. Sony PS3 and PS Move Black Friday bundles leaked. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's, it's that time of year again. Black Friday. Oof. Oof. Special holiday bundles that Sony's preparing have leaked thanks to images of a printed packaging shot by Scream777. He claims to work at a Sony, Sony packaging facility. And it says... Um, Complete entertainment bundle, Blu-ray, gaming, stereoscopic 3D, HD movie streaming. Over $165 in savings. Ratchet and Clank, all for one, and Little Big Planet 2 are bundled in this. It looks like it's a 160 gigabyte bundle. Uh, expected to be around 250. That is very impressive. It's very impressive, especially for those who are looking to get into the PlayStation 3 this holiday. Uh, that's a good entry point. That's probably who they're aiming for. Thanks, Tech Niffin. Uh, let's see. Outdated! No! <laughs> Swell Tour recognizes there are no oceans. What? 
What does this even mean? People started saying that, but Christmas. Admittedly, it was only slightly less than the amount. Oh, given date was the twentieth, an odd choice, presuming the I hate my family market. But one like great and slightly yes, U.S. You you now you've seen the game like oh same day. So EU and U.S. getting the same date release. Is that what they're saying? What was the original date? I guess there's yeah they're just saying that uh, they recognize that people live across the ocean and time zones are different. It was releasing on the 22nd of December and now it's going to be on the 20th. All right, I get it. It's going to be 21st in America, so it's going to be the same day. I got it. The brain is starting to work again. Thanks for that, Imran Dill. It's ominous that open platforms are less popular. Apple wrong philosophically. And. Gaming and philosophy don't mix. Um, I just want to say that out loud. Uh, mods, indie games, and Half-Life Full Life Consequences series. Blah, 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 blah. So he's talking about platforms. Um, blah, 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 blah. The platform side is sort of ominous. The world seems to be moving away from open platforms. I'm worried that the things that traditionally have been a source of a lot of innovation are going... Uh, they're going to be the attempt to close off so that somebody will say, I'm tired of competing with Google. I'm tired of competing with Facebook. I'll apply a console model and exclude the competitors I don't like from my world. Blah, 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 blah. I think, I don't know. Um, don't know if I agree with Gabe here. He said, I consider Apple to be very closed. Let's say you have a book business and you're charging 5 to 7% gross margins. You can't exist in Apple's world because they want 30% and then they'll care what you... No, no, no. So... This is a common misunderstanding with the way Apple does things. Apple thinks about ecosystem, where you have a choice to enter it or you don't enter it. You have the choice that once you enter the ecosystem, you get benefits of the ecosystem. The constraints of the ecosystem is that you must abide by their strict rules. So uh, I, don't, I don't think the whole open platform really applies when you talk about ecosystems. The platform is not an ecosystem. A platform and is an enabler. I mean, you can compare it with Objective C. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think. I really don't think that Apple's world is a platform. It's an ecosystem. So, and uh, I respect people who don't like Apple's ecosystem because they don't want to be in that confinement. I know a lot of people who love it because they don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. There's a choice. So I, I don't agree with Gabe there. I don't think you can really make a platform argument versus an ecosystem. But, you know, Val, and Gabe is a very smart man, but I would disagree with him all day and night. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, thanks for that, Emron Dill. Modern Warfare 3 is not copy pasta. I wonder what copy pasta sounds, tastes like. What is copy pop? Um, Sledgehammer. Modern Warfare 3 is not a cut and paste. <laughs> okay. With a new installment of Call of <coughs> coming out each year. You know, let me just go to this quote. If you put Modern Warfare 2 next to Modern Warfare 3, you will see a huge difference. Oh, Oh, well, based on the trailer, Sledgehammer, got to disagree. I, maybe when we get the games in our hands, we'll be able to tell. But first impressions say nay. So I'm not going to call you a liar up front because you may have seen things we haven't seen. Uh, he says, look at all the character models. They look exactly the same. Look at all the gun models. They look very similar with new attachments, but very similar. Look at the reflections. No, I didn't really look at the reflections. Look at the water. Didn't really look at the water either. There's so much we've added. So when someone says cut and paste, I don't even want to talk to them because they don't know. They just don't know. They have no idea. He's defending his game, guys. I'm not going to hate him for that. If you work on something, you're going to defend it because you know all the work that went into it. But I got to tell you, Mr. Sledgehammer guy, uh, from where I'm sitting, 
from the end user perspective, from the uh, consumer, from what I saw from, from COD Elite, it looks very much copy pasta. Um, and there, sure, there's going to be little tweaks, little improvements, little things to add that you've done, and you're quite proud. Hey, you're probably quite proud of that. But from where I'm sitting, it looks very much the same. And you know what? In this day and age, for COD, there's nothing wrong with that because people are going to buy it anyway. I mean, people like COD. They like Call of Duty. So if you do do copy pasta, you're in good hands. That's the sad truth. We don't. We, a lot of us don't agree with that truth, but it's how it is. Um. So yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, let's say he added that the engine is a Porsche, calling it more impressive than engine he's worked on previously. I've worked on a lot of engines over my lifetime, and I've spent a lot of time putting graphics in them, and it's thing as a Porsche. Okay, I respect your opinion because I haven't worked with engines. And what I mean by that is that it's streamlined. Everything is perfectly freaking clean. You can tell it's been worked on for years. It's easy to upgrade. All right. You're, this is misleading. If it's been worked on for five years, yes, it's going to be efficient. Yes, it's going to be clean because it's been worked on for five years. That's not necessarily a Porsche. I can get a, I don't know, a, a Yugo and work on the engine for five years and have it running like a champ. Doesn't mean that the engine's good or that the engine should be praised. It's efficient. I can upgrade it easily. Sure. It's very efficient. Um, but a Porsche? I'm sure Porsche owners are not happy with that. On top of that, what we've added is the audio, what we've added to the audio engine. There's a lot of stuff under the hood, which I don't doubt. I know there's a lot of stuff under the hood. People don't think about this, but when you make tools better, you can iterate twice as many times you make the game better. No, 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 no. That's where I draw the line disagreement. That's the problem. Just because you have good tools, just because you're efficient, doesn't mean you have to crank out games as fast as possible. No, 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 no. I am in strong disagreement of that statement. And that is the problem people have with COD right there. He just summarized it. He just summarized. He's saying that since the engine is so efficient, they can just iterate and pump out games. Blah, 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 blah. And he says you make the game better. How? Just look at what he said they added. Let's go back and read what they said they added. He said they added. Um, let's, let's go through the list. Character models, gun models, reflection, water. Which one of these make the game better? <laughs> I, it does. Oh, okay. He's defending the game. I can disagree with him, but he's defending the game. That's his work. I've said this before. I'm not shipping an engine. I'm shipping a game. So that's why I'm going to talk about the game. You can talk about your engine all you want. It's not fun. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then he goes on some other stuff. So there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, I don't know. It's um, It's hard to agree with him here. Because... The market is counting on cut and paste. The market, the market is counting on cut and paste because it's um, it's a formula that's tried and true. It's like the iPhone. I mean, here's here's a, here's a good parallel. It's like the iPhone. The iPhone 4s just came out, broke records. Incremental improvements. Very. You got a speed upgrade. You know. 
the outside looks exactly the same speed upgrade got a really good camera but overall just incremental upgrades broke records left and right people are like what is the same phone uh well that's exactly what that was the right decision to make business wise and that's what activision is doing gamers we don't like it but that's what they're doing they're taking a the cash cow and they're going here have some more grass and then more cows more grass and stuff i don't know what i just said thanks for that link enjoyed that out too long skyward sword denies southpaws you left-handers are going to be mad mad man uh won't have a lefty mode at all so oh if you want to swing the sword with your left hand you're out of gas Ooh, ooh, ooh. I emailed Nintendo Public Relations. Ooh, this lefty righty thing is an issue because Skyward Sword requires players to use the Wii Remote with motion, that motion Plus to swing Hero Link Sword with finesse. <laughs> the kind of finesse a left hander like me might not feel when wielding the remote in one's right hand. Well, unless you're ambidextrous, British. You're not going to have a good time, Skyward Sword, unless this is false. So we'll be following this, see if Nintendo provides an update. Ugh. Okay, Apple is coming to video games. Let's talk about Infinity Blade FX, which got a lot of good reviews, using all the good stuff in uh, iOS 5. And the new hardware. Um, Epic Games is teaming up to put a big screen version of Infinity Blade on the arcade fried food chain. Single screen or two player, two finger. What the heck? This is an arcade cabinet? Nice. Uses the same cabinet as the arcade Fruit Ninja and flight control machines, all of which feature a big 46 inch touchscreen. It'll be in all 57 Dave and Buster's locations by October. Nice. Very nice. That might be worth checking out. I haven't been to Dave and Buster's in a long time. I'm about to convince my wife to go with me. Um, okay. Let's celebrate with a hat. Oh, we already talked about that. Uh Battlefield 3 open beta wrap up. Alright. Ooh, pretty numbers. Pretty numbers. I have to can I expand this oh there we go okay I was like I can't read that okay battlefield 3 open beta stats 47 billion shots were fired I bet it was 48 they're lying 2.2 billion regenerated health or oh, everyone who played assault contributed to 2.2 billion regenerated health 19 million people lost their dog tags at the end of a knife Oh, that's the that's kind of depressing. Wow. I was with you to the knife part because I like dog tags and that, that sound doesn't sound all that good when you read it like that. Uh, if it comes were active Twitter users, every single one would be smoking a smoking crater. 21 million MCOM stations bit the dust. What does that have to do with Twitter? What is it, huh? Anyway, a lot of MCOM stations got blowed up. Um, at how many many at how many New York City blocks away from a marksman would you feel safe? Six hundred and thirty five point six meters is the longest headshot recorded. Hacks. One point five billion kills were registered. That's equal to half the items half the liters of beer consumed across the world. I don't like comparing deaths to statistics. This doesn't feel right. This just doesn't no. <laughs> let's, let's just leave it at that. Let's not compare deaths to beer. Dice. That just doesn't feel right. Ugh. All right. Good link. I like stats, but that kind of disturbed me a little bit. All right. Um. And with that, that concludes all of my time. Wrong song. It's title time.
Title time! This is where you guys provide titles. Woo, we're running long. Title time, guys. Let's see some snazzy titles for tonight's show. In case you didn't know, you come up with a snazzy title that matches the stories that we have. Something witty, something great. Let's go! We require more vests NBA players. Game chat with blah, 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 blah. Have life to and stop responding. <laughs> uh, Super Portal Brothers. Left-handed Zel- Zelba players. Occupy Hyrule. That's like point four. Oh, uh, have like two XE and stop working. Modern Warfare Three fanboy riches. Uh, Manco Store is Valve's Team Fortress of Cashitude. Uh, Uncharted PS3 is woken up for put. Uh, yeah. Final Fantasy Fourteen gets flashy. TF2 gets crashy. Uh, Super Portal Brothers. I don't know where we said that. Deus Ex Final Fantasy Revolution. Uh, we require more dunks. We require more dunks. Uh, game chat for the Final Fantasy Update Edition. Left handed beer lovers hate dice. Do not pass BF3. Do collect $200. Achievement. Spoiler alert. One that never asked for this Final Fantasy update. <laughs> Arkham City Catwoman get. Final Fantasy is fun again. We really mean it this time. From hardwood to creep. <laughs> Final Fantasy is fat Third, Wait, what? I see what you did there. Final Fantasy 14-2 returns to subscription model. I was like, there's no 14-2. What are you talking about? Um, My Warfare with new water feature. Happy anniversary, baby. TF2's hat trick, money for Valve. Um, it's the end of the world of Warcraft as we know it. Final Fantasy 22 is the making spoiler what day you six. What? 90% of all statistics of what dice calls a good day at work. My word for three likes copy pasta. I like the Drake, Seinfeld quote. Team Fortress $2 million. I get it. Makes sense. Sir, you buy it used for an extra $10. We require more keys. Battlefield 3, Final Fantasy DLC, Uncharted 3. $25 dragon dropping online passcodes. I'd buy that skin mark disc for a dollar. Starheart beta. <clears throat> Who cares about the name of this video? Give me some Batman skin. Call of Duty finds itself on the set of Groundhog Day. There's more than one way to skin a Catwoman. Oh my goodness. Final Fantasy 14, there's nothing to do. Uh, if you close it up, my word for three, if you close it up, we added some differences. Treat what? NBA to IPL is jazzy with me. I'm cuckoo for chocobos. <laughs> Call of Duty, best engine out there. Battlefield 3, we're sorry, our bad. Call of Copy, Modern Warfare, Paste. <laughs> um... Battlefield 3 spawn campers meet Mr. Mortar. Be advised, Battlefield 3 to include online pass. Free games. $2 million revenue. Breathe, want to breathe. Wait a minute. That's not a title at all. Title of Final Fantasy 14 gets a rewrite while WoW sells its servers. That fish twig. That's not a title. What are you talking about? Modern gaming. See what copy pasta tastes like. Copy paste pasta. I like pie. <laughs> Valve sets trends. Blizzard follows trends. Activision copy pastas. There's so many titles. <laughs> Call, Call of Duty Porsche. What? <laughs> this is so many titles, man. Woo! All right. I think I picked out some. Wow, because I was copy and pasted as we weep. As we weep, as we went along. I don't even know what I just said. Um, wow. Woo. There it is. All right. I got three. I has three titles. I has three titles. Here comes the three titles. I has three, starting with one. Here's one. Here's two. 
Here's three. Let's go. Vote one, two, or three for your favorite title out of those gems. You might be the lucky, no, you're not lucky. You might be the winner of something of nothing because title time winners receive absolutely everything if everything was equal to nothing in this backwards world of stuff that we call Game Chat with Twitter. Okay, I think we got a winner. Who even came up with that? Let me see. Okay, 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. And the winner is one. Shadow Chibi wins by a landslide. Final Fantasy 14 gets flashy. TF2 gets crashy. Congratulations to Shadow Chibi. You, sir, have won absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing because Game Chat with Warner, we don't give out any prizes. But what you do win is bragging rights. Bragging rights. You can go and tell your friends and family, hey, man, guess what? I just won Game Chat with Warner title time. And then he'll look at you and he'll go, <gasps> And then he'll give you a hug. You guys will go out, watch a football game, sit back, chillax, and be happy because you, sir, have them bragging rights. Yes, sir. Game chat with Buona bragging rights. I'll give you a pen if I had it, but we don't give out anything at game chat with Buona. Just them bragging rights. All right, guys, that concludes episode 34 of Game Chat with Buona. I want to thank everybody for coming by tonight. Like I said last week, we are starting the show a little bit early. We're starting at 6 p.m. Eastern now. So of our, a lot of our UK and European guys, guys across the world, Australia, you guys don't have to stay up till 4 in the morning to watch the show. You can watch on your, uh, you know, kind of late. It's like 11 p.m., 12 p.m. over there. Save Australia. It's probably very late over there. Um, but uh, you guys can watch the show. Whereas those on the East Coast will watch it after work. Those on the West Coast, I don't know. I haven't received any feedback from anybody on the West Coast. Might be a little early for you because it's like 3 p.m. East or 3 p.m. Pacific start time for you guys. But we're starting a little bit early here. You can come over to live.buana.tv or twitch.tv slash buana. Um, so uh, you can check out the show live. You can come by and participate in the chat room. Join our forum. Go to buona.tv slash forums. You can sign up for our community forum. Participate in the gaming section. Participate in the general chat section. Participate in the Minecraft section. Just find your interests and contribute. We do have rules like every forum. So follow those rules. And uh, we'll welcome you with open paws. And uh, have fun over there at game chat. Buona.tv slash forums. And uh, I also stream video games here. I don't just do this podcast, so I stream periodically during the week. Um, so you can follow my twitch.tv slash Buona channel. Uh, you'll be notified via email. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Buona, or on twitter.com slash Buona Live if you wish to be notified via Twitter when I go live. Yeah, it actually tells you what I'm doing. The title tells you. Like, if I'm playing Minecraft, it'll tell you I'm playing Minecraft. So you can choose to come or not. Uh, if I'm playing like Bloodline Champions, which nobody shows up to watch, then you don't, you know, you can come if you want. All righty, then that concludes the show for tonight, guys. This is episode 34, and I want to say thank you all for supporting me. We do have a booming, I call it a booming premium subscription uh, system going. We got 34 people in our premium system, guys. And this is a great package I have where people can choose to donate $5 a month. And uh, they get a lot of benefits in Minecraft, a lot of a lot of benefits in um, in Team Fortress 2. We were giving out particle effects this past weekend. People get to choose what hat and what particle effect they want. Well, they have to own a hat, but 
what particle effect they want, and you get that as part of the premium package, as well as some form benefits and some other things. And they were eligible eligible for a giveaway, which happened this past Friday. And I want to say congratulations to Sarams, Sarams one eight one one, who actually won this month's giveaway. He chose to just get money. One of the options to win was sixty dollars PayPal cash. He took the money and went and bought himself Skyrim. Yes. Like literally the, the second I gave it to him, the money was gone. He went and bought Skyrim with it. So congratulations to Saram. Five dollars a month supporting me gave him, you know, a little bit of a token of return to him. Sixty dollars in return for supporting game chat one all right guys that concludes episode 34 and i will see you all next week have a great day night morning take care bye bye cut, cut. cut.